Children's use of spatial language relates to skills that are important in science and math. I studied some very basic spatial skills, uh, the ability to know spatial words for shapes and sizes, the ability to visualize spatial information in the world, to, to form a mental image of those uh, shapes and sizes, and to transform them in your mind, to turn them in your mind and visualize what that would look like. A common kind of a toy might be a, a shape sorter, and this provides a great opportunity for parents to use spatial language. They might be able to say, instead of put this one in, they could say, could you put the cylinder where it goes? And they could point out that on this side of the cylinder, there's a circle. Spatial learning obviously relates to geometry learning, but it also strengthens children's understanding of number. Children who have better spatial visualization skills tend to have better understanding of the number line, and better understanding of the number line supports their mathematical abilities. Uh, I conducted this experiment based on a naturalistics uh, database that we've collected at the University of Chicago. It involved 52 parents and their young children, and we observed them naturalistically playing or doing whatever they do in their home environments, and then we looked at how much spatial language was used by the parents and the children. And then later, when the children were four and a half years old, we assessed their spatial thinking. Well, when we looked at the videotapes that we recorded during those sessions, we found that parents varied very widely in their use of spatial language. Some parents used up to 500 spatial words over those sessions, while as others only used five spatial words. And uh, that had an impact, of course, on children's use of these spatial words when they were talking. They were more likely to use spatial language if their parents had used it. We found that the children's spatial language, using words like circle, square, triangle, or talking about this tower is taller than this one, uh, would uh, predicted how well they did on the nonverbal spatial tasks that we gave them when they were four and a half years old. The mental rotation task, the ability to turn things in your mind. On average, producing 45 more spatial words, but the child saying those words during their spontaneous conversations led to more than a 20% gain on some of the spatial uh, tasks that we gave them when they were four and a half. Spatial learning has been a relatively neglected aspect of learning. There's no subject in school called spatial. Uh, it's the, spatial learning is uh, spread out over many, many subjects, but we're beginning to learn that sp the quality of, of a person's spatial thinking is highly predictive of whether they're going to go into what we call the STEM disciplines, science, technology, engineering, and math. And frankly, we need more people to go into those disciplines. So the view of our research is that by starting early, by increasing children's spatial thinking early, by using spatial language, by engaging in spatial activities like block play and puzzle play where that language will come up, that we can uh, have kids who are more prepared to enter those disciplines if they choose to.